I'm Rebecca Lang, author of The Southern Vegetable Book. We're gonna make caramelized Vidalia and yogurt biscuits. So we're gonna start out with a quarter cup of butter, and we just wanna melt it in our skillet. And the fun thing I love about Vidalia onions is they are very sweet, and Vidalias have a little bit more moisture content and sugar than other onions, which is perfect to go with our biscuits. Now this is gonna take about 35 minutes on medium-low heat, the reason we're doing it fairly slow is because we have so much sugar in our onions that we don't want to cook them too fast and make them over brown. So this is kind of a low, slow process, but at the end, it is totally worth it. Our onions are perfectly golden brown. And what I want to do is I want to take these off the heat now and I want to let them just cool to room temperature because one secret with biscuits is you never want to add a hot ingredient to your cold butter that's gonna be going in with our flour because cold butter makes a flakier biscuit. So we'll put these in a mixing bowl. Isn't that color so beautiful? I'm gonna mix in about a cup of whole plain yogurt. It's kind of the same concept of using buttermilk because it has a lot of acid in it, so it gives those biscuits a nice tang. And now I'm gonna put in three quarters cup of heavy cream and just mix this together till everything is blended. Then we're gonna let this sit just a minute while we mix together our dry ingredients. We're gonna start out with four cups of self-rising flour, which is a Southern icon. The Southern self-rising flour already has salt and baking powder in it, but because because I have my rich onions and I've got my heavy yogurt, I'm gonna add a little more oomph for us to rise these biscuits up. So I'm putting in another tablespoon of baking powder. We're gonna put in a quarter teaspoon of salt. And usually when I'm working with dry ingredients, I think that a whisk works best to mix everything together. We're gonna put in three quarter cup of cold unsalted butter. And I like to use unsalted butter because really at the end of the day, if I need to add salt, I always can, but I can't take it away. So we're gonna use a pastry cutter to cut in our small cubes of cold butter. The colder the butter is when it goes into the oven, the more steam that it releases and the more those biscuits just rise and rise. All right, now let's mix in our onions and our yogurt. Now we're only gonna stir this just until I have everything moistened. The more you over stir a biscuit, it's gonna make the biscuit tough. All right. Now here comes the fun part. We're gonna turn out our dough and then we're gonna knead everything together. We've got a floured board. And so you can see I'm kind of putting it together and I'm pushing it down with the heel of my hand. Now with really well floured hands, you can never have enough flour when you're baking biscuits. I like to pat the biscuits down and we're trying to pat to about three quarters of an inch. Now let's take our biscuit cutter and dip it in your flour because we want to coat the cutter with flour. And you want to cut straight down and never twist your biscuit cutter. A lot of people will bend down and then twist the cutter. And what that does is it actually makes your biscuit lopsided, or as my grandmother would say, cattywampus. So you want to always go straight down and come straight back out. And look what a nice, pretty biscuit that is. And I re-dip in the flour every single time. And you really want to cut as close to each other as you can to make use of all your dough. And the really cool thing about this recipe is that from this exact stage here, they freeze really, really well. So you can go ahead and put them in the freezer just like this and pull them out and bake them frozen. Now we're going to put these on a baking sheet and get them in the oven. Look how moist this biscuit is. You don't even need a knife to open it. It is perfectly beautiful inside. The color of the onion is throughout, and that's a biscuit you can be proud of.